So boats are one of the ways that through generations and over many different kinds of cultures, we've learnt a little bit more about the lives of whales and dolphins. And boats like these enable us to go on maybe longer journeys where we can see what some of these animals are doing in some of the deeper water areas. But obviously, boats can only ever tell us a little bit, a fraction of what's really going on for their lives because we can see a great deal of what's happening on the surface, but we can't see very much about what's happening underneath the water. And that's really where most of the activity happens. That's where a lot of the social interactions are happening. That's where the feeding happens, breeding, mating, all of those things. And so one of, this is one of the things that really gave us an idea about developing a book which would bring together some of the science that tells us what do we know about cetaceans in terms of their interactions with each other, their cognition, their brain structure, how do they breed, how do they migrate, and then to relate that also to what humans know about cetaceans through their own cultures and the information that's been passed down from our own cultures about these animals and how they relate to us. Now obviously whales help to fuel the industrial revolution so we have in the western hemisphere we have that kind of relationship with them but also in various other parts of the world for example in the Pacific Islands for some peoples in the Pacific Islands whales actually and dolphins can be perceived as their own ancestors so there's a whole range of different relationships that people have with these incredible animals and one of the things that we've tried to do in the book Whales and Dolphins, Cognition, Culture, Conservation and Human Perceptions is bring together all those different aspects of human perceptions and then what the new cutting edge science is telling us about these animals and to ask the question, okay, so now we know so much more about them and we bring all of this science together in one place, does that mean that we need to manage them in a better way? Do we need to do better for these animals now that we're understanding more about how they live, how complex their lives can be, how some of them are solitary and they may not see their, any other of their conspecifics for years? And then bring that together and say, don't we need to do better for these animals?